time as well. So, to, uh, yeah. So the next thing is to generate efficient code. Uh, we have indirect control flow transfers, and these are really expensive, as I said before. We want to translate the indirect jumps, indirect calls, and everything. But all these indirect control flow transfers need a runtime lookup and patching when we, when we translate these. And in the original layout of the binary translator, these indirect control flow transfers are replaced by a software trap and we branch back into the binary translator. In the binary translator, we then have to calculate the target address from the original instruction, execute the software trap, look up the target, fix the return address, and redirect to the target. Uh, and we have to ensure that during the, our time in the uh, binary translator, no pointers to the code cache or other indirect data structures of the binary translator leaks to the user space program. So one instruction in the original program is translated to more than 30 instructions in the translator code, which is kind of really bad. So can we avoid that or just lower the cost? And yes, we can. We have to be clever about the code that we generate. And uh, we have to optimize for different instruction encodings. Uh, depending on the, on, the, on the type of the indirect call, we can use different optimizations and optimize for that specific case and choose the best fitting optimizations. For example, we have static indirect calls that always branch through a fixed location, or we have dynamic indirect calls which branch through a register. And we can use different optimizations for that. So one example is a branch through a fixed location which is used in, uh, for shared libraries. When we load shared libraries, we have a big pointer table. And as soon as the library is loaded, we back fix these pointers so that they point to the correct location in the loaded library. Um, and these calls through the fixed location uh, incur overhead every time when we call a function that is in a shared library. Uh, originally, it looks uh, like a push of the source address and a jump to the target. And the translation looks like that on the, on the right hand side. We push the source address just verbatim like it was done uh, with the indirect call, but instead of an uh, indirect jump, we compare our cached target, which is emitted into the code cache, with the target that is specified on that memory location. And if we have a cache hit, then we branch directly to the target if the, the prediction works out. And this kind of optimization bets that we have a, a very high hit rate on that. If we don't have a hit, we have to, to call an expensive fix-up function which will fix our prediction which is in the code cache and then backpatch all these things so that we can work them on the, uh, during the next run. So uh, the, the fixed indirect call prediction is more expensive than normal indirect jump. But if we have a high hit rate of like 60-70%, this will lower the overall instruction count. On the other hand, if we have a dynamic indirect call through a register or something like that, once again, on the left-hand side, we have the, uh, how this instruction will look like in the processor. It's a push of the source address and then a jump to that, to that specific register. On the right-hand side, we translate that uh, that instruction into a lookup into the code cache, uh, a, a lookup into the mapping table, sorry. And the, uh, we emit all the code into the code cache. This is a kind of a fast lookup which only checks the first entry into the mapping table. And if we, ha if we have a cache hit, we branch directly to the, uh, to the correct entry. If we have a cache miss, we will call a recovery function. But this works in most of the cases as we have more than 99.999% hits in the, in the mapping table if we run a, an average program. So the first thing is we load the target uh, from, the, from the stack. We do some specific hash function, which is based on a hash pattern, and uh, use specific encoding to compare the, the entry in the hash table with our location that is on the stack. If we have a hit, 
Then we just load the, the instruction pointer out of the hash table and write it into, into a, a, a straight local data structure. If, that's work, if that works, we do some uh, cleanup from the stack and readjust the stack and then jump to the, to the, saved, to the saved entry. Maybe you can see here that we don't save the, the target address on the stack. That's why, uh, that's how we, we guard from uh, analysis of, a, of an evil program of the, of the stack so that it doesn't reco recover any uh, pointers into the code cache. So if we don't have a hit, we have to use a recover function, but this recover function will not change that code in the, uh, that code in the, uh, in the code cache, because normally this will work out most of the time. So these are just two of the optimizations that we did. Many more optimizations are available in the, in the code for return instructions, indirect jumps, and function inlining. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do which are discussed, which is discussed in other places. And these optimizations that we do here, and further optimizations that I didn't discuss, bring competitive performance and make it fast. So after that, I will discuss the uh, security hardening. So we now have a competitive and fast binary translator, but we now want to make it secure so that it doesn't escape uh, out of the, the virtualization. So through the binary translation, we check every single instruction and we can do additional security checks on top of that. We can force the non-executable -executable bit that is not enforced in IS32. We can check ELF header regions and writes whenever we load uh, libraries. We can protect internal data structures. We can check and verify return addresses and check and verify all indirect control flow transfers so that we don't branch into an instruction or branch uh, or jump somewhere into a library code where we shouldn't jump into. So uh, I will discuss these things into, in some detail now. Enforcing the n bit, uh, nx bit is a, uh, that's a kind of a non-executable bit or executable bit that is defined in, uh, in the elf headers and elf regions. And we can enforce that based on a, uh, on a region uh, based on regions defined in these uh, in these elf elf headers, so we don't even have to to do granularity checking based on pages. We can do specific checking on region based, and we build up a data structure which will check for every indirect control flow transfer or translation of some code if it is really allowed to execute that code. If it is, all is fine and will continue. If it isn't will stop the program. Uh, additional checking is done for ELF headers, ELF regions. Uh, we can check uh, all call instructions if they branch only to exported functions. We can check all jump instructions so that they only jump to uh, inside their ELF region and inside their, their object region and don't jump into, into other objects, other dynamic, dynamic objects because it wouldn't really know what that code is uh, and make sure that they st always stay in their module. And the, uh, we can also uh, enforce the defined access rights on the ELF region and not on the coarse grained pages that I discussed before. Uh, one additional protection that CQBT offers is using mProtect for all its internal data structures. There are two different forms or takes that we can, uh, two different things, two different possibilities that we can do to protect the internal data structures. Because, well, our goal is if the malware finds out where our data structure is, we kind of have lost because you can override things in the code cache and execute arbitrary code, then execute arbitrary system calls based on the uh, privileges of the, of the user. So uh, the first take that we, we have is uh, relying on a probabilistic form of security where we just don't leak any pointer to the, uh, to the code cache or to any other internal data structure. So the, to find out where the code cache is, the, uh, the malware 
must be lucky and guess the correct location.